Ten Twelve Big 12 special team show where we recap some of the biggest special teams plays from the Big 12 from the previous week. I'm your host, Philip Slavin. Thank you for joining us. Love doing this each week, coming to you from the kids' playroom. Uh, I don't do this show on my own. Typically, I bring in a guest. We've got a nice little rotation of guests that we've started to put together here in our first year of doing this. And I'm very excited to have former Kansas State record-setting punter Devin Angtill joining us again. Devin, welcome back, man. Yeah, it's good to be here. Good to talk about special teams once again. The Big 12 is a big weekend for it, so uh, it's pretty awesome <laughs> to be able to talk about this again. They definitely gave us plenty to talk about this week, and especially one game in particular. We got a, we got a few things to talk about when it comes to uh, what happened in Red River, specifically Oklahoma. Five big plays that in the end didn't cost OU, who we were able to get to the win over Texas. But there are some big special teams gaps. We're going to kind of run through them one by one. We've got to, of course, we've got to play from the special teams player of the week in the Big 12. And we're going to talk a little Oklahoma State as well. Uh, let's start with the first big one. This was a Texas fake. Texas fake punted. Got it across for Oklahoma. They fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. It worked, which is always fun to see that kind of stuff work out. Uh, let's go ahead and play that one while we watch. Uh, Texas is going to line up here. And perfect execution. Well, or maybe we'll get to watch. Oh, that's right. That's when the game signal went weird and no one got to see what actually <laughs> happened. Still, I mean, that it, it was perfect execution on Texas's park and Oklahoma fell for it. And I, and I, I kind of wonder here with Oklahoma, I mean, again, this is the first of five, five plays that work for Texas or go wrong for Oklahoma. I mean, right. we're going to go through each one of them, but like, what did you see from Oklahoma or Texas in this? Who's who gets more credit Texas for pulling it off or Oklahoma for failing to, to spot it beforehand. Well, definitely Texas, because usually in that situation, when you're snapping it to the personal protector, which is, the basically the last man standing here that's uh, standing in front of the punter. Uh, you could see the long snapper, number 58. He was lined up, uh, pointing his body to that personal protector on the left side. So uh, as soon as you see that and the punter is not uh, aligned differently in his stance, uh, Oklahoma should have been, uh, the players on the field should have been signaling, hey, we, we got to look out for a fake here. Um, I'm sure I don't think Texas has ever done something like this before, too, on film. But you can see at this angle right here, the long snapper was perfectly aligned to the personal protector and he took it for a good game. Yeah, I got him a first down. Um, I believe that drive still didn't do much for Texas. I believe it ended with an interception in the end. But again, a, a game full of mistakes on both sides. Next one, uh, Oklahoma going for a punt here. They're backed up in their own end zone. And this is the per this is exactly what you try and, and preach both as a coach, especially on defense, is we want to get them backed up. We want to stick them in their end zone. We want to be able to make them pay uh if their offense isn't able to execute. Well, I'm waiting for the video to yeah. load. Thanks, YouTube commercials. I always appreciate that. Uh well, in this spot too, you just as a punter, you hate being in this backed up uh in your own end zone uh right there and this is i mean it's just a terrible situation right here for the punter i mean it, just, it feels like a nightmare scenario like could could this be any worse oh man the, my computer is really not my friend today uh <laughs> uh for oklahoma for texas i mean again good special teams play heads up spot here to to get after the punter and i want to get to the right spot here give me a second we're gonna watch this again I swear. It'll happen. There we go. Uh, technical errors. Technical errors. I mean, Boom. what happens? Is Texas just overload and able to to overwhelm the protection there and get past to, to hit that kick? Well, one thing, Oklahoma, they run a two-man shield. And typically in college for a uh, traditional college-type uh, punt protection, you're usually running a three-man shield. Um, I don't know. The Oklahoma has been – getting a uh, punts blocked by running that two man shield. And we used to do that at K state where we would go after their punter because the two man shield is very vulnerable. You just have to overload the shield. And if that shield doesn't block the way that it's supposed to block in its protection guess is wrong. It's a prime block for, uh, for the punt return team. Um, we used to do that all the time against Oklahoma too, where we would come up with a key, a key block. And I remember doing that in 2020, uh, AJ Parker got a punt block because 
the shield did not block uh, block the uh, uh, block us correctly, and uh, he was able to block the punt. We ended up going down and kick a field goal to win the game. So um, I, well, they might. I could definitely see them going forward. Them changing their pump protection because it's very vulnerable. I mean, obviously, different teams do a two man protection. Why? Like, if it's that vulnerable, if it's that like, why? Why go with a two man protection over a three? Well, a lot of people, they go two-man protection over threes because in the two-man protection, you get an extra guy out in coverage quicker. Um, if you, as opposed to a three-man, a three-man, you're using more bigger type offensive linemen. Maybe you're using a big tight end in your three-man. But uh, yeah, typically in a two-man, it's two big offensive linemen. And that third guy is usually out on the wing on the left or right side, and they can get out in coverage a little bit quicker. So you're trying to prevent the big return, obviously backed up in your end zone like that. It's 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 a lot closer wherever they're going to catch it, uh, and and so obviously you want to protect. Okay, so that I get it, but I also see the the flaw in, uh, you know, if you're going to give up a, if the punter's going to get blocked right there in the end zone, like it's just make it that much easier for them. All right, next one from Oklahoma, they tried to pull off a trick play on special teams here. It does not go well, Texas. <laughs> Kicking off after they score their first touchdown, Oklahoma thinks they've got something special cooking here. I mean, the, the special teams coach for Oklahoma just not not having a great day today. The Texas right. is going to kick this off. Oklahoma is going to try and pull off a, a little bit of trickeration here. Oh, we got a nice got a nice lateral there. We we pitch it to to number seventeen. He's going to return. Look at that's a great return. It's a great. Oh, yeah. It worked perfectly, except uh, it's an illegal forward pass. Uh, mm -hmm. You did not execute the play correctly. And so it looked great until they go back and review. They don't even throw the flag. They go back and review this. If you notice when he tosses the ball, it is a forward pass. It is not yep. a backwards pass or lateral. So just like, it's a great idea. It was a great play design, poor execution. Right. And this is something you see like in middle school and high school. You don't see this in a college football game. Really? Uh, maybe you'll see a traditional reverse where they, handed off to someone coming around the whole kickoff uh, return formation. But instead of just waiting, just maybe a half a second, a full second longer for him to be able to get behind him before he tosses it up, he tosses it forward and it looked good live. But obviously when you slow that down uh, and in the review, you could clearly see that he tossed that ball forward before the guy uh, for Texas caught the ball to, to return it. Again, None of this ends up costing Oklahoma, but it is something to keep right. an eye on. I mean, you're, to have this many things go wrong, mm -hmm. is it just it's one of those games? It's um, you, you just you just the excitement. It's a rivalry. Everyone's amped, and things just go wrong. Or is this a sign of we've maybe there's some issues at Oklahoma as far as special teams go? Well, there's definitely some issues from this game that they're going to have to. Uh, fix up because uh, I, I definitely think that's going to bite them later on sometime in a game at some point this year. We, who knows when it will be, but those mistakes on special teams will definitely catch up to you at some point. Special teams are supposed to complement your rest of your game. And uh, by having those mistakes with the blocked punt and then uh, called back right there on a big gain uh, on kickoff return, uh, those, those things might bite you later on down the road. Uh, we got another one here. Lots of lots of OU today. Uh, Oklahoma goes for a punt here. Uh, in the this is mind you, this is all the first quarter. We, <laughs> we haven't gotten crazy. out of the first quarter yet. <laughs> like all these mistakes are in one quarter. It's still seven seven. They're lined up for the punt. The punt's going to get off. They're going to have a flag thrown for illegal formation. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to back this up here if I can, and I need you to show me. The spot that's the problem. Uh, if I can find the right spot, man. Sometimes this stuff is a little bit more. I'm almost there. And it's gonna. Oh work. man! <laughs> <laughs> One day I will pay for a YouTube Premium and be able to uh, be able to just download clips and play them. But in the meantime. What, what, where's the, where's the problem here? So you can see, right. Uh, they don't have enough guys on the line. of Well, sorry. They have too many guys on the line of scrimmage. Um, and then when they had too many guys on the line of scrimmage, someone was covering up someone and um, 
we're going to go back just a little bit. It looked like it was the someone on the right side of the formation was definitely messed up. And they're just going to have to get that uh, taken care of because you can motion people just the way that they did, but you can only have so many guys on the line of scrimmage. Um, so they're definitely going to have to, definitely a mental mistake right there. I mean, all right, we got one more. This one, a little bit less so, right? Not not a, not a major mental gaffe, just a missed field goal. And again, doesn't come back to, to haunt Oklahoma in any way. But this was, a, this was late in the game. This is a big play. At least Texas thought so. I mean, it's in the fourth quarter. The clock's ticking down. Yep. You're up seven. You could have pushed the lead to 10. You're not able to. And it's just a miss. It's just a miss right. Yep. It was so, a big kick right there, too. I mean, you, you're trying to push this to a to a two-score lead instead of a, a very slight one-score lead. Um, right. I'm going to probably back up too far here. I mean, from from that shot, what what do you see that you feel like went wrong? Just so I'm, I remember watching this play live too, and the kicker he just pushed it a little bit too far to the right. He left, he left his hips a little bit too open at the kick. It looked like his line was good, everything was good, but when he comes to the ball right there, he definitely did not bring his hips through the kick on t- on time when he was making contact with the ball. Um, that's pretty common from the left left hash or left middle um, for a kick. Uh, a lot of times the kickers uh, they just they're afraid on the left side to bring their hips to the kick because they're afraid of pulling it. Um, you could see kind of right there it was really fast, but he did he just didn't bring his hips to the kick as he was making uh, contact through the ball. I mean, it it wasn't a big miss. He was close, but mm-hmm. I mean, it, it is interesting. So what? What have you seen that you would kind of consider common tendencies as far as mistakes kickers make in situations like that? You said that's that can be fairly common when you're lined up on the left hash is to to not get your hips all the way in because you're afraid of of pulling too far to the left and then you end up leaving it too far to the right. Yeah, but it's the complete opposite on the right hash where kickers are afraid to not get enough of their hips through it. So they overshoot their hips across their body, and that's when they pull a kick off to the left side. So, I mean, those are two pretty common things when you see kickers from, from the hash, uh, from the hash marks. All right. Uh, Big 12 special teams player of the week this week was uh, Trevor Wilson from Kansas. Uh, Reason for that is an 82 yard punt return touchdown that he had against UCF. We're going to watch that one because it's always fun to watch uh, a special teams touchdown, be it a, a block kick or a punt return or a kick return. Uh, and this is just, I mean, they, UCF seemed like they might have him back there right at the beginning. And then yeah. he, once he gets through everybody, he's gone. Right. I mean, it, 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 it was a, it's that whole thing of like, if you just got to make one guy miss and that's, that's kind of what he had to do his cover, which was there to protect yep. him and help him out. And he made one guy miss. And once that happened, he was off to the races here. Yeah. And KU didn't even block it, this return, that great. He, I mean, the Wilson just did a great job of making some guys miss, and then he used his speed and athleticism and then IQ to just basically go out there and just run as fast as possible and get it to the end zone right there. Uh, definitely tough for a punter. He definitely put it in the right location where the call was probably made, too. He had guys down there. They just uh, – the first guy missed, and everyone else was out of their lane. So uh, – Recipe for disaster for UCF right there. Uh, definitely a disaster for UCF on Saturday. Big play for Trevor Wilson. Got to love returns. That, that's going to get you player of the week a lot of time. Um, We're going to wrap up on this one. This one from Friday, Kansas State. Uh, and their yeah. loss to Oklahoma State. They did. Kansas Oklahoma State attempted six field goals in this game. Uh, 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 Got to get it paused up in the right spot. We don't want to. Don't want to get in the wrong place. Hold on just a second. Okay. <laughs> Which is crazy. Six field goals in one game right there. Yeah. And, and I'm going to give Alex Hale his props here um, because he tied a big 12 or an Oklahoma state record with five makes in the game. His only miss was less a miss and was just this block. Yeah. Um like, which is again, that's not on him. This is poor coverage on on his on on the Oklahoma State special teams to to make sure he's got 
essentially his clean pocket. I mean, Kansas okay. State is a, you know Kansas State one of the best special teams in the country year after year is able to get in there. Okay. Is it just that they found a weakness by overloading the left side and Oklahoma State didn't respond accordingly, or what do you see that allowed for number twenty one to be able to get that push there and get that block? Well, he was just able to shoot the hole right there. The the right uh, the right tight end and the right wing they're supposed to get their arms out in the gap. So in field goal protection, you you work your way down. Your your most your biggest threat is inside out. Okay, and you can see here that the right wing does not get enough on 21 on his inside part, and it just left him right a wide open hole for him to shoot through. Um, and then he made the block too, which is perfect. That's where you call the block at is right where the upright's at. That's where the block is usually coming through. So um, definitely uh, an error on the right wing and right tackles part. And also a side note too, we actually have an offensive lineman, Kate uh, Katori Leviston. He is uh, number 70. He's, you know, he's our left tackle. He actually plays on field goal block over the, uh, over the guard of the kick side, which is pretty cool right there. Um, and you actually saw that recently uh, last night in the Packers game, the Packers had their backup left tackle played over the, over the kick too. And he made a block too. So a pretty uh, interesting thing right there. Maybe we'll see more of a shift, the big offensive lineman playing on field goal block going forward. I mean, if it's going to work for a couple teams, everyone's going to, you know, whatever works, you're going to copy it and, and try it for yourself. Again, props to Alex Hale. Uh, he did make the five field goal attempts that were not blocked by Kansas State. So props to him on those uh, that included a uh, tying his career high uh, with a 53 yard field goal to open the second half that that ties his longest uh, again that that five field goals in one game ties Quinn Sharp's five field goals that he kicked in one game back in 2012 and I think Hale probably would have had six for six if not for the block there so but big game for Alex Hale congrats to him congrats to Trevor Wilson on on his Big 12 special teams play uh, and Big 12 special teams player of the week award Devin, again, man, appreciate you every time. This has been great. Do me a favor. Where can everybody uh, check out the work you're doing in special teams nowadays? Yep. So you can look for a Twitter account, Instagram account, even my website. It's punt21 is the Twitter, Instagram, and the website is punt21kickingservices.com. And uh, we just train punters and kickers throughout the whole Midwest. So if you want to learn more about kicking, uh, give us a follow. And if you want to Link up for any lessons. Go ahead and book book with us. We'll get you ready to go for whatever you want to be able to do. Appreciate it, Devin. Always a pleasure to have you on. Your expertise as uh, is indispensable. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, we'll get you back on again. And I'm gonna figure out something better than trying to play YouTube clips because I'm ads, man. They just they get me every time. They get me every time. Yep. Every time. <laughs>